Hello and welcome to another episode of Buncombe Weekly, a show right here on BCTV to let you know all about upcoming county-sponsored events. And we're letting you know about these events at Craggy Garden, which is just 15 miles north on the Blue Ridge Parkway from downtown Asheville. Now just to let you know, all the information I'm going to give you in today's episode can be found online at our website at buncombecounty.org. And while you're there, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube page by visiting buncombecounty.org slash YouTube. Well, if you've ever thought about becoming a foster or adoptive parent, but you don't know where to start or even what you need to know, the Buncombe County Department of Social Services, along with local area adoption and foster agencies, are hosting the WNC Foster Adopt Fall Festival, and it's coming up. It will take place on Saturday, November 17th from 1 to 4 p.m. at the Asheville Biltmore Doubletree Hotel located at 115 Hendersonville Road. Not only can you learn how to become a foster adoptive parent, but you can also find out about children who need a family now, talk to families who have fostered, youth currently in foster care, and you can even bring your kids as arts and craft activities, face painting, balloon animals, and light snacks will be offered. Admission and parking are both free. For more information, you can call 828-250-5868 or email familiesforkids at buncombecounty.org. Well, now that it's fall, our yard work chores have gone from mowing the grass to raking the leaves. And while these leaves make for good mulch and compost, if you have too much of them, you can always bring them to the Buncombe County Landfill for recycling. Clean, untreated wood and brush are accepted at the landfill for $20 per ton for commercial vehicles or $10 minimum per load for residential vehicles. Leaves must be separated from the brush and placed in a separate area and must be removed from plastic bags when left at the landfill. As a result, the Buncombe County Landfill also sells mulch for just $10 per scoop, which can fill up the bed of a large pickup truck. A tarp is required to cover the load of mulch, so if you don't have a tarp with you, you will not be able to purchase mulch. Hours of operation for the landfill to drop off your leaves and brush and pick up your mulch are Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 11.15 a.m. and 12.45 to 4 p.m., Saturdays at 8 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. For more information, you can call 828-250-5462. Now, usually when winter comes, our level of outdoor activities and exercise tends to wane. We'll fight that winter slump with the Buncombe County Parks, Greenways, and Recreation Services Department. They're hosting a dodgeball league, and signups begin in November. Make sure to sign up early because the signups will only last until the maximum number of teams have been reached, which is eight, or by mid-December, whichever comes first. The cost is $225 per team of six or $40 per person. The registration fee includes the facility fee and equipment. Games will be played at the UNCA Asheville Justice Center on Tuesday evenings beginning in January and going until the end of February. The winning team will receive a plaque to commemorate their accomplishments. For more information about signing up for this fun sport, call or email jnelson at 828 250-4269 or j.nelson at buncombecounty.org. And speaking of the Parks, Greenways, and Recreation Services Department, they have many upcoming announcements for the Buncombe County Special Olympics. Basketball season will be underway with practice beginning on Monday, November 12th at the UNC Asheville Gym. In the past, teams have consisted of four three-on-three -three teams, but this year the competition hopes to include the traditional five-on-five -five teams playing on a full court. For more information, you can contact Greg Mace at 828-250-4260 or email greg.mace at buncombecounty.org. The 12-person Special Olympics cheerleading squad, the Rams, are also practicing every week at the Zeugner Center in Asheville. In the past, they have cheered at T.C. Robertson High School games and at UNCA. These extraordinary athletes have taken home gold medals for the last four years. For more information or to sign up, Contact Stacy Presley at stacy.presley at gmail.com. On November 15th, Coach Sam Lloyd and his Special Olympic athletes will begin practicing for the upcoming ski season. It will start on dry land at T.C. Robertson High School. After skiers refine their skills on dry land, they get the opportunity to ski on snow with two trips to the Cataloochee Ski Area in Maggie Valley, weather permitting. For more information about practicing, contact Sam Lloyd at 828-859-2832. 
And finally, Special Olympics bowling is now currently underway, practicing once per week at Sky Lanes in Asheville. They're practicing for the upcoming tournament taking place on Monday, December 3rd. Sky Lanes on Patton Avenue has opened their lanes to Buncombe County athletes as they have in the past. So all who are interested in joining, please contact Greg Mace. Greg Mace can be reached at 828-250-4260 or by emailing greg.mace at buncombecounty.org. If you're looking to add a new four-legged member to your family, look no further than the Asheville Humane Society. They have plenty of adoptable dogs and cats, like Pebbles here, who are in need of a good home. Now, when you adopt from the Asheville Humane Society, not only are you saving a life, but all of the pets have been spayed, neutered, and received their shots. Asheville Humane Society is dedicated to the compassionate treatment of animals through education, sheltering, and adoption. Come visit the Asheville Humane Society Adoption Center located at 14 Forever Friend Lane, just south of the Farmer's Market, to visit all the wonderful animals available for adoption just like this one. Evan Root is a five-month-old male black and white tuxedo cat. He is very talkative and playful. Moon is an energetic and playful three-month-old male hound pointer pit bull mix puppy who is looking for a family to care for him. Keely is a six-month-old female tortoise shell colored cat. She's a calm yet curious young lady. Mason is a seven-month-old male boxer lab pit bull mix. Mason is good with other dogs and is a great hiking buddy. Knight is a very spunky four-month-old male gray and white cat. He is full of energy and would thrive in a multi-cat household. Maverick is a 10-month-old Great Pyrenees mix. Although he is a large dog, he has a gentle nature and seems to be good with children. Mickey is a two-and-a-half-year-old female gray tabby cat. She's loving and adventurous. Posey is a six-year-old female blue tick coonhound. She is polite and affectionate lady who enjoys car rides. Aspen is a beautiful three-year-old female calico tabby cat. She enjoys lounging around and will even give you a massage. Gracie is a three-year-old female wire hair fox terrier mix. She has a sweet disposition and will be a great companion. To reach the Asheville Humane Society Adoption Center, call 828-761-2001. Or to view all of our available animals for adoption, go to our website at ashevillehumane.org. Now stay with us because coming up you'll learn how to make some healthy holiday snacks and you'll hear about all of our library events, so stay with us. Did you know that the Buncombe County Public Library System has story times for children of all ages? When children are read stories and interact with the storyteller, they expand their vocabulary and establish a love of reading at a young age. If your child hasn't experienced these interactive story times, now is a great time to start. There are four different story times offered at all county libraries. School age story time is for six to 12 year olds. Preschool story time is for three to five year olds. Toddler time is an interactive story time for children aged 18 months to three years old. Finally, Mother Goose time is a lively language enrichment story time for four to 18 month olds. To find out what story times your local library offers and their times, please visit buncombecounty.org library. Good morning. What are you up to today? Uh, I'm not really quite sure yet. Huh, I just got a text from Ginny. Apparently she got the flu and she's not going to be able to come out tonight. I think I should probably get a flu shot. Yeah, I heard the flu shot actually makes you sick. Really? I thought because we were younger that we were more susceptible to get the flu, so everyone should get a flu shot. I think I'm going to take my chances. Well, good luck with that. Thanks. Good luck not getting one. Ha 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 ha!
<coughs> Hold on one sec. <coughs> Hello? Hey, George. You should come out. There's a lot of people here. We're having a great time. Oh, I can't. I think I got the flu. Ah, oh, you should have gotten a flu shot. You're really missing out. All right, we'll feel better. Well, the Buncombe County Register of Deeds Office is making it easier now for you to access vital records by allowing citizens to request and pay for birth, marriage, and death certificates online. Now, Buncombe County Register of Deeds Office is one of the first in the state to implement this, so we're here now at the Register of Deeds Office with Keith Green to tell us all about it. Thanks for joining us, Keith. Oh, thank you. So when and why was this implemented? Uh, it was implemented in April of this year to uh, expedite the process of receiving vital records, birth, uh, death, marriage certificates, you can do all that online 24 hours a day, seven days a week. How is this compared to the old way of having to get it? Because I know when I had to get my birth certificate before, I had to like find out where the hospital was that I was born in the state that I was and and it's obviously much easier here. Well, here in Buncombe County, you could uh, come into our office or you could mail or email uh, uh, your request to get your vital records. Okay, so it's not only easier for the citizens, how is it making it easier on you all? Well, we process about 15 to 20 uh, requests a day. Now, with this process, we could double that, and it would not uh, slow our business down at, at all. Oh, great. Yes. Uh, so have you heard any feedback from citizens on, on the new the implementation of it? All the time. Uh, everyone is very excited about uh, the, the speed. We had a guy from Sacramento call us uh, yesterday, and uh, he was so excited to learn that. He, first, he called us, and he, he didn't understand that he didn't have to come here or email us, and he, he just processed that. Uh, he made that process online, and uh, he, was very, he was very excited. They, they can do it seven days a week, like I stated earlier, 24 hours a day, uh, not just when they get off work or trying to rush into our office. If they're not limited to your office hours Exactly. Now. And uh, thanks to our IT department, it's, it's very great. And um, everyone that has used this has just given us uh, praise. Great. Well, thanks for joining us, Keith. Well, thank you. The new Register of Deeds online request form is easy to use. So if you're in need of a birth, death, or marriage certificate that occurred in Buncombe County, just visit buncombecounty.org forward slash vital. Choose your required record, fill out the required information, upload a copy of your photo ID, complete the payment, and the request will be processed within one business day. Please note that only births, deaths, and marriages that occurred in Buncombe County can be requested. Now this service was created by the Buncombe County Information Technology Department in collaboration with the Register of Deeds Office. This is just one step in making county government processes easier to use, understand, and access. The Buncombe County Office of Cooperative Extension wants you to tackle the holiday season in a healthy way. They're doing so by offering a cooking with diabetes class on how to prepare snacks and healthy holiday foods. It will take place on Wednesday, November 14th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Cooperative Extension Office at 94 Cox Avenue in downtown Asheville. This is the second of the Cook Smart with Diabetes classes, with each costing just $10 to attend. Pre-registration is required as class size is limited. 
In this class, they will prepare easy on-the-go snacks that can help keep your healthy eating habits on track during the busy holiday times, as well as prepare healthy party foods. For more information or to pre-register, contact Kathy Hohenstein with the Cooperative Extension Office at 828-255-5522. The Buncombe County Public Library System and the Thomas Wolfe Memorial are sponsoring a two-part reading and discussion series based on Wolfe's short story, The Child by Tiger. The story is based on the real event which took place in Asheville in 1906, so it's a great event for all you history buffs out there. It will take place on Tuesday, November 27th and Thursday, November 29th at 6.30 p.m. at the YMI Cultural Center at 39 South Market Street. The story focuses on an African-American newcomer of an unknown past and uncertain name, possibly named Will Harris, who embarked on a killing spree in the heart of downtown that resulted in five deaths. Within two days, he was hunted down and killed, with his body being displayed in a storefront window. On Tuesday, Dr. Darren Waters of the History Department of UNCA will present African American Survival Strategies in Asheville to discuss the social mechanics that came into play during the event. On Thursday, Wolf scholar Miss Joanne Malden will present Thomas Wolf and Race, an unfound door, to discuss the factors that shaped Wolf's attitudes towards race. Free copies of The Child by Tiger will be available at the Buncombe County Public Libraries and the Thomas Wolf Memorial throughout November. For more information, call the library at 828-250-4740. And speaking of the libraries, when you think of the Buncombe County Public Library System, don't think of just a quiet place to sit and check out a book. They sponsor many events throughout the year for every age and interest group. They also hold book clubs every month. Here are a few of these book clubs coming up. On Thursday, November 15th at 7 p.m., the Fairview Library will hold their book club featuring the book Still Alice by Lisa Genova. Still Alice is a novel about a 50-year-old woman's sudden descent into early-onset Alzheimer's disease, written by first-time author Lisa Genova, who holds a Ph.D. in neuroscience from Harvard University. On Tuesday, November 20th at 7 p.m., the Black Mountain Library will host their mystery book club featuring the book Cat Laughing by Shirley R. Murphy. Fans of Lillian Jackson Braun and Rita Mae Brown and Cat Lovers Everywhere will delight in this newest mystery featuring two furry felines on the scent of a killer. Also on Tuesday, November 20th at 2 p.m., the North Asheville Library will present their book club featuring the book Ellen Foster by Kay Gibbons. Winner of the American Academy of Arts and Letters Sue Kaufman Prize for First Fiction and of the Ernest Hemingway Foundation's Citation for Fiction, it features an 11-year-old heroine as she tells her unforgettable story of honesty, perceptivity, humor, and unselfconscious heroism. And finally, on Tuesday, November 27th at 7 p.m., the Black Mountain Library will host our Favorite Books Discussion Group. The meeting is open to anyone who would like to discuss one of their all-time favorite books. Now those are just a few of the events sponsored by the Buncombe County Public Library System. If you'd like to see the full list, check out buncombecounty.org library. And now it's time to keep an eye out for this week's Mountains Most Wanted. Buncombe County Crime Stoppers is a very important program that allows you, the citizens of Buncombe County, to partner with law enforcement to help keep our community safer. Your anonymous calls are very important tools in helping us locate people who are wanted by the authorities. I also want to personally thank you for making Crime Stoppers the most watched program on Buncombe County TV. Here are a few subjects we're looking for right now. Andy Carl Curtis is wanted for failure to appear for felony larceny, obtaining property by false pretense, possession of methamphetamine, possession of marijuana, drug paraphernalia, and driving while license revoked. Curtis is a 27-year-old white male with brown hair and blue eyes. He is 5'7 and weighs 150 pounds. His last known address, 11 Old Jack Lane, Candler, North Carolina. Trenda Lynn Foreman is wanted for failure to appear for felony probation violation and solicitation of prostitution. Foreman is a 37-year-old white female with black hair and blue eyes. She is 5'3 and weighs 150 pounds. Her last known address, 19 North Ann Street, Asheville, North Carolina. If you happen to know the location of any of the mountains most wanted, you could receive a cash reward. 
All you have to do is email Crime Stoppers at tips at buncombecounty.org or call 828-255-5050. With your help, we can continue to make Buncombe County a safer place to live, work, and play. Now stay with us because coming up you'll learn about some great ways to stay up to date with county sponsored events. My name is Dave Ligotti. As a musician, I started playing very young. I had my first band when I was 12. And uh, I've proceeded on through the remainder of my life playing music, falling in love with jazz. I play in venues in the uh, Asheville area here now. Prior to the law went into effect to uh, eliminate smoking from the uh, venues here, uh, it was a challenge for me as a non-smoker. I am um, very sensitive to the effects of cigarette smoke uh, for my voice. It would uh, limit me to be able to survive a full four hours of singing adequately to hit my notes. It would uh, cause me to cough in the middle of a song. It would cause me to um, have watery eyes and they would burn and get real bloodshot. After the ordinance was mandated to have non-smoking venues, I didn't notice any difference in people who would come. It appeared to me like it did not cause any problem for the owners of the venues to lose business over this. People still want to be entertained and still enjoy going out. Other people that I know that are in this business that don't smoke are very positive about it. I even had positive comments from, from smokers who admitted that although they smoked cigarettes, they still didn't like sitting in a room that was just emanating with cigarette smoke. My health has definitely improved. My voice range has increased. It's very wonderful to play in a smoke-free environment. On Route 66. I'm Sheriff Van Duncan of Buncombe County, here with Chip. Hi, I'm Chief William Anderson of the Asheville Police Department, here with TAG. A lost pet can devastate your family. Prepare your pet before they go missing. Microchip your pet at the Buncombe County Animal Shelter. Make sure your pet is wearing a collar and identification with current information at all times. Keep a current photo of your pet on hand in case your pet should go missing. Remember, proper identification is your pet's ticket home. Well, with it being November and the holiday season, make sure to be aware of what days the county offices will be closed. County offices will be closed on Monday, November 12th in observance of Veterans Day, and Thursday, November 22nd, and Friday, November 23rd for the Thanksgiving holiday. County offices also include all of the libraries and landfill services. For a listing of all the county department closings, please visit buncombecounty.org. Well, Buncombe County has many great resources to keep you up to date with county-sponsored events and promotions. Just visit buncombecounty.org and they're right there on our homepage. You can befriend us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, connect to our Nixle feed to receive emergency notices and updates to your phone during a disaster. You can subscribe to our YouTube page to see all of our original programs, and you can see our recent picture editions on Flickr. 
So when you get the chance, visit buncombecounty.org and get easy and quick access to everything Buncombe County. You can also view all of our original programming right here on BCTV Charter Channel 2 or on AT&T's UVerse service on Channel 99. And speaking of BCTV, not only can you catch all of our programs on TV, but you can also catch them online whenever you like. We recently launched BCTV's new website, so check it out by visiting buncombecounty.org slash BCTV. You can join Kathy Hughes as she takes you all over Buncombe County for Buncombe Life. Come out and play for a detailed list of all of our county's parks, greenways, and recreation department events. Buncombe News updates that covers all of the recent events from Buncombe County government. Preschoolers, we love you for the kids. Stay in shape with our healthy life exercise classes. You can also join Margaret in the kitchen for cooking for your health. And of course, our Board of Commissioner regular meetings. We also have a number of programs from our Cooperative Extension Office, ranging from information on stormwater to even your monthly garden chores. If you'd like a copy of any of our programs, or if you would just like to send us some feedback, email bctv at buncombecounty.org. Now, Buncombe County recognizes the value of government-to-citizen communication and also the crucial role that mobile technology plays in today's society, which is why Buncombe County has gone mobile with U-Town. Another great resource is the Buncombe Life publication, whose fall 2012 edition is now available at any county office or library. Thank you for watching and make sure to come visit Craggy Garden and explore the Blue Ridge Parkway during the fall season. Have a great week, Buncombe County.